All right, guys, welcome back. You might recognize this work here that's on the screen from a couple of videos ago where we used the moment area method to find slope and deflection at the free end of this cantilever beam that had more than one load. It's got a point load there and applied moment on the end. So this is basically, uh, the work in this video is like the standard way to, to use the moment area method. But there's another way to do it, and it's called doing the moment area method by parts. So basically, we're just going to take advantage of the method of superposition. Um, again, we've done a couple videos on superposition already. Um, but basically, what we're going to do is we're going to sum up uh, two different systems for this. In case, uh, in this case, we'll have like a, a cantilever beam with just the point load, and then the cantilever beam with just the applied moment there. And then we're going to solve their moment diagrams and then m over ei diagrams. And uh, and actually, you know, here let's clear some space on. Uh, Let's clear some space off of the sheet here and uh, I think what I'll do is I'll just draw what that's going to look like. So it's just like this. According to the method of superposition, this system with two loads is equal to the sum of these two separate systems that have the exact same geometry but just one load applied at a time. So when we do this by superposition we would draw the shear force diagram for each of these and then we can draw the bending moment diagram for each one as well. And because we're going by the method of superposition, uh, then the actual bending moment diagram can be represented by the sum of these two bending moment diagrams. So we can just draw them together on the same axes, basically. And you'll notice here, actually, if we added up any point on this, we had, like, for example, the beginning here, negative 160 plus positive 60. That's going to start us at negative 100, which is exactly where the actual bending moment diagram starts. And then here at the end, zero, uh, negative, you know, this, attend, this bottom one tends to zero, and if we add on 60 kilonewton meters, uh, it's the same thing. We're ending up with 60 kilonewton meters at the far right-hand side of the bending moment diagram. So these two things are totally equivalent. And so then the next thing that we would do is we would draw the M over EI diagram, where same thing here is we just literally divide every point on the, the bending moment diagram by EI. And so in this case, we can uh, we can quickly do the math here. 60 divided by the EI was 0 0.003 meters to the minus 1. And then negative 160 kilonewton meters divided by EI is negative 0 0.008 meters to the minus 1. Then from here, just for a cantilever beam, we do the same thing. We, have, we pick uh, the fixed end as point A and the free end as point B. And then we do our first moment area theorem to get the relative angle of the tangent line of B relative to the tangent line of A at point B, which with a cantilever beam is the actual amp slope at point B. And then we also do the second moment area theorem to get the tangential deviation of those, uh, of those tangent lines. And again, the way that we set up this problem with A and B, that that tangential deviation, just like we used in another video, is going to be the actual end deflection of the free end. And when we're using this, um, we're taking this top one as area one, this bottom one is area two, and then x bar one would be the distance from the centroid of area one over to B, and then x bar two would be the distance of the centroid of this area over to B. So very similar to just using the standard moment area method. Um, in both cases, we're basically we're using these expressions uh, and summing up these areas as composite shapes with positive areas being positive and negative areas being negative. Um, but just when you do it this way, it's, uh, it's called doing the moment area method by parts. So if you're asked to do it by parts, this is the method that you do. You split it out uh, using the method of superposition with each force or applied moment, um, and uh, you should be ending up with the same answer. So uh, let's join me in the next video, and we'll do this exact same problem uh, from beginning to end, and uh, we'll make sure that we do get the same answer both ways.